Hi everyone, Alex with Beam It Up here. Today I'm going to show you how to size ductwork in Revit. In our previous video, we added some diffusers, we specified their flow, we added some uh, hard and flexible ductwork, and finally we added some balancing dampers. For this video, we're going to learn what the parameters are to size ductwork, and we're going to size a ductwork trunk. See you in Revit. Okay, so this is how to size ductwork using Revit MEP. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to open our mechanical model. If you don't know how to create a mechanical model, go ahead and check that video out. The link is also in the description below. And what we did in our previous video was to uh, drop some diffusers in a ceiling and we assign a certain quantity of CFM to each one of those diffusers. Actually, let's revise those quantities here. I'm going to keep these four diffusers at, um, let's say, 200 CFM each. And then these two guys over here, I'm going to have them at 300 CFM, since they're taking care of a, a little bit of a larger area on their own. Now, if you're not currently using Revit to size your ductwork, then most likely you are either using a ductilator, which is something like this, a piece of cardboard or wheel, or you go online to an online calculator, or you have a previously developed Excel sheet. But the idea is always the same. You have a duct, your, you, your duct is made out of a certain material, which has a friction coefficient, and then you can size either by friction rate or by velocity. One very common value for friction rate is 0 0.08 inches of water per 100 feet of ductwork. And then either your online calculator or your Excel sheet or your cardboard wheel will spit out a certain area. And that area can be translated into a round ductwork diameter or into an effective area that has a, a width and a height. Either way you would have a certain amount of CFM or cubic feet per minute that you want to flow through your ductwork. Let's say in this case 300 and then you calculate and then you get a, an effective diameter of 9.2 inches that's in the in a round duct and if you wanted to find the equivalent in in uh, in a rectangular duct then you would put the the diameter and then uh, you would constrain one of the sides let's say the height is constrained let's say to eight inches because that's the ceiling space we have available uh, and then you would say find second side and then you have 8.9 inches you would take it to the next nominal value let's say at 10 inch by the eight, 8 inch duct and then you would be done. However, that keeps you disconnected from your model and what we want to do is size based using BIM, Building Information Modeling. So how to size ductwork using Revit MEP? Well, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that our ductwork is able to calculate. So in order to do that, you come down here to your families you go under duct systems, you expand this, and then the one that we're trying to calculate for this exercise is a supply air duct. So we're going to go under supply air, go to type properties, and make sure that under calculations you have it set up to all. Because if you have it set up to none, you cannot calculate anything. If you have it, cal if you have it set up to flow only, you can only calculate flow. And if you have it set up to performance, you can only calculate pressure drop. What we want to do is calculate everything. So let's leave it into all. So we were fine. Now the second thing to make sure is that your system is perfectly connected. In order to do that, you tap select and you make sure that everything's being highlighted. So we're fine. Now another thing to do is to, you need to make sure you tell Revit which way the air is coming from. 
either from this side or from this side so typically what I do is I I just cap uh, all the open ends and then at the end I say okay where's my air handler let's say my air handler is on this side so here uh, this is where the air is coming from now uh, if we were to calculate right now without splitting our ductwork what Revit would do is size this whole trunk as if it was supplying the six diffusers and that's not what we want what we want is probably split our duct so you do SL and then we split here because this piece of ductwork is going to be sized for this two diffusers then we're going to split here because this other piece of ductwork is going to be sized for this four diffusers and then this last piece of ductwork is going to be sized for the six diffusers and now we are ready to calculate so to calculate you highlight your system you click on it and then you go here in their duct sizing and then here the the two main methods that I previously discussed sizing by velocity or sizing by friction uh, in this case we're going to size by friction and we're going to use that very common value of 0 0.08 inches of water per 100 feet of ductwork now you have your presenter with three options you can calculate by friction only without you're, you're disregarding velocity you don't care about velocity or you can calculate with an AND and this would take the largest size between your your pressure drop requirement or your velocity requirement or you can use sizing OR which is it's gonna select the smallest size between your pressure drop and your velocity so summarizing if you do AND it will select the largest between the two values and if you click on OR it would select the smallest between the two values and then at the same time you need to keep in mind that you have this constraint about branch sizing and then you can use this is for for this flex for example or, or this 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 takeoff and the flex and it can be either with your calculated size or it can match the connector size the connector size which would, would be the neck of that 24 by 24 diffuser uh, or it can be the larger of either the one that you're calculating or the the neck of the diffuser uh, let's keep the the calculated size only and then we'll match our our diffuser to whatever it should be although you could you could also calculate your your diffuser for sound to minimize your noise that's uh, if that's your criteria uh, but in this case we're just going to keep it to ca uh, calculated size only and let's hit OK actually now by by now this is regarding the trunk right you need to fix one of your dimensions in this case I'm going to fix the I'm going to restrict the height to let's say uh, 12 inches I don't want my ductwork to be any more than 12 inches high and then it's going to calculate the width so let's hit OK and my ductwork has been sized now let's check our calculations uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is open my 3D view to see it in a more comfortable environment and then we can see I actually like to keep this as shaded I think it looks a little better if we go to our 3D view, I hit, I just clicked on do so you can see it on a 3D view. See how my ductwork is all the same size now and if I hit redo, then it calculates the sizes. Okay. Now if you want to refine a little bit more, you can check your ductwork sizes against your diffuser neck. For example, in this case you got 7 inches and you have on this side uh, 24 by 24 by 6 you're kind of constricting this at the end so you may want to change this to uh, 24 by 24 by 8 inches uh, and then probably resize your ductwork to have a smooth um, transition there uh, and then for this one 
for this piece here you can tell that this dot actually was taken up to 8 inches notice that this one was taken up to 7 inches because this diffuser had 200 CFM this one here had 300 CFM and if you're serious about learning Revit MEP go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com over there we offer professional training and coaching for Autodesk products like Revit AutoCAD MEP we also offer courses in fire protection systems plumbing systems and HVAC and you can take it one step further and click on your system and hit here on uh, system inspector and then click on inspect and you'll see that in this piece of ductwork for example you have 400 CFM flowing you see it does this 200 and this 200 together you can see your static pressure here your pressure loss and then here you can see that you have incorporated the other 400 CFM from the other two diffusers and then here finally you have 1400 CFM and if you're using this tool you can take it all the way down to your air handling unit and you can size it with your CFM and your static and if you enjoy this video make sure you like it down there subscribe to the channel hit that bell so you get notifications thank you for watching and see you on the next video